Hello to everyone from all of us here at Upshot. Welcome to the latest Upshot Community webinar. These webinars have been designed to help you as users of Upshot to get the be very best out of the system. Today's session will cover activities, sessions and registers. And we hope this will be really useful for both as a refresher for you experienced users out there, as well as an introduction for new users just starting to collect data using Upshot. As always with the ideas we present in these webinars, if you do use Upshot as part of a funding agreement, please do check with your funder or your line manager before making any changes, um, or indeed you can speak to the Upshot team for advice at, at any stage. In a moment, I'm going to be handing over to my colleague, Paul Beecroft, who will guide us through setting up activities, um, creating sessions and recording registers. First, I wanted to share with you a simple structure that can help, um, is found really useful for, for new users particularly, um, help to understand the structure of Upshot and how to navigate through the system, being clear on the terms that we use. So you'll see here on the screen, I've got a pyramid. If you think about the structure of Upshot as that pyramid, you have a project at the top. Now, organizations can have several projects, um, but for instance, one project might be around employment. Within that project, there are going to be activities, and that's our second layer. So within each project, there are, there are several activities, such as, in this case, CV writing or interview workshops. Um, and there are activities or strands of work that we do. Within each activity, you then have sessions. So sessions that might take place on Monday evening or a Friday morning, um, and those are the sessions that uh, we, we record in Upshot uh, within each of those activities. And then for each of those sessions, there'll be registers. So these are things that tell us who attended, how many people attended if we're using headcounts, um, and we can also add other evidence such as uh, media. Um, and photos and things like that as well, which bring the sessions to life. So if we look at project, in every Upshot delivery account, there are projects or areas of work. Within each particular project, there are any number of activities that you can have. And in addition to this, at the activities level, we can group these together or tag them by a type or theme. Within each of those activities, there are any number of sessions so with dates, locations, length of time, the type of register, and who is responsible for each one. And at the bottom of our pyramid, for each session, we record either a register or a head count. And we can also, in addition to that, add any other evidence such as media or notes, all that data that brings a session to life. So it's a handy way to remember how it's structured within Upshot. So without further ado, I'm gonna hand over to uh, my colleague, Paul. Uh, who's going to guide us through um, some of those aspects of Upshot. Thanks for that, Lynn. Um, so yeah, I'm going to take you through some of the core features really of Upshot today and often the first step for lots of organisations in monitoring their work on the system. So as Lynn mentioned, within Upshot, your work is first off divided into projects, so sort of separate areas of work. So for my dummy organisation here, I have a sport project and I have an education employment, so quite separate areas of work. And within them will sit what we call activities. Really simply, think of activities as the strands of work that you actually deliver. So what do you actually deliver? It's gonna be an activity in upshot terms. So for example, in my sports project, that might be things like yoga, dance classes, or touch rugby. And then in my educational employment project, that might be different types of classes or workshops. If I go into the education employment project now, we'll, we'll see this as we go along. So within your project, you'll find your activities tab on the right hand side. We're gonna spend our time today on this activities tab and then the sessions list and sessions grid, which truth be told for the majority of users, it's where they probably spend the majority of their time on the, on the system, where you record this kind of core data entry. So when we're on this activities tab, we see our different activities listed. So within my education employment project, I have different activities like cooking classes, English classes, maths classes, or CV writing, jobs fair, employment workshops. 
what you can see as well here is I can group these activities so I can have these kind of subheaders if you like of education and employment different activity groups to be a nice way of pooling together these individual activities for reporting purposes but also a nice way of structuring down this page and structuring your your project and your list of activities rather than just one long list here so what we can do here is we can add a new activity for example a, a new strand of work that we as an organization might be delivering a really key thing to say here is that the vast majority of the time when you come into upshot you won't need to add a new one of these activities we're doing it obviously to show you the process today but most likely what you'll need to come in and do is add your sessions and your registers so you know when did a cooking class take place and who came along that's what you'll be focused on activities like we say are only added once every so often I'm just going to show you that process now I'll touch on a couple of key things so on the right hand side you can add an activity and these can be added at any time so whenever you start delivering maybe new strands of new strands of work you'll see there's a few required fields on here so the name of that activity so for example we might start delivering digital skills workshops quite vital yes over the last few months for example here we can say a default location so where maybe these these workshops generally take place maybe the sessions generally run in the community hall or maybe recently they've just been often delivered online you can change the location for each specific session but this can help to save you a little bit of time so i might say that these generally take place in the community hall for example here what we see is an activity type so activity types are another key way of kind of grouping together your activities alongside consistent themes that sit across your account so it doesn't just have to be themes that are related to the education and employment project it might be consistent themes that link together activities across your three different projects now this list is completely customizable but if for example i link this back to an activity type called workshops what that means from a reporting perspective is I could report on any activity across all my projects that is linked to an activity type of workshop. So this might not only be my digital skills workshops, it might also be the employment project, uh, employment workshops, sorry, within this project. But if maybe in the sports project, I maybe deliver healthy eating workshops, I link that back with the activity type like so gives me another layer like I say um, for reporting gives me another angle for reporting on my activities across my projects further down here within the project I can say that this is related to the education activity group that we saw earlier it's that way of breaking down activities within a project and then finally we have a required uh, build here required drop down around outcomes so outcomes are the change that you as an organization are working towards very simply if your digital skills workshops don't relate back to any of your outcomes that are listed then the question almost the system is asking is why are there for you delivering it in some ways here outcomes might be set by funders so we've got some dcms outcomes in this example or any of your own organization ones your work here can be related to at least one or it has to sorry be linked to at least one of these outcomes but it could be as many as possible from the rest so for example this might link to individual development mental well-being people maybe go to get a job based from their attendance on the digital skills workshops it might link to economic development and might lead to improving access to education in the local area like i say it can be as many as relevant but it has to be linked to at least one we save this like so and like I say, our activity now sits on the page for, for new users to Upshot or for people less familiar. You'll start to see these green success messages as we go along here today. The system will just give you that kind of nice confirmation or a red error so you can clearly know where you've, where you've gone wrong. Like I say, just to stress that again, you'll only add new activities really once every so often. You know, the stuff that you deliver as an organization probably is quite consistent at least for say a, a few weeks or a couple of months on end it's maybe just once every so often you deliver something slightly new and you need a new activity but vast majority of the time you come into here the activities tab 
I find my activity and then I say add sessions. So sessions are very literally, you know, when does this take place? When do my digital skills workshops actually happen? So I say the date, I can click on this calendar icon here, I can say first of these sessions took place on, on Tuesday the 8th of December. Something quite key here, and you'll see as we go along, is I'd always recommend creating multiple sessions at once. That just means that when you come in later on, when you log back into Upshot, all you've got to come in and do is take your registers, say who came along, you know, Lucy, Tony, Tim, etc., came along to this session on the 8th. Save yourself time, set up these sessions in advance. So I say the date, I have to say the time here, and the time is a 24 hour clock. So if it took place at two in the afternoon, I type in the 14 and you'll see I'll get these quarter of an hour breakdowns here. I can just select one of these and this makes it nice and easy. If I wanted to be more specific, I could be, I could put in the colon and how many minutes. If it started at two o'clock, just make that selection there. If the session only lasts for an hour, I don't have to put anything in the minutes box, that's absolutely fine. You'll see I have a couple of optional tick boxes here. So the first one on public calendar, Upshot does give you the option um, to share uh, a link um, out with maybe potentially your service users or put on your website or an email of all the different sessions that are taking place, letting users know what's going on, etc. But you don't have to share that and it's not shared out by default. It's completely up to organisations if they do look to actually use that link. So if you do leave that ticked, not the end of the world, but if you're unsure, maybe just untick that for now. Here, what you can do as well is you can create registers too. And what that means is that I can say, okay, well, the people that attended this session on the 8th of December on my digital skills workshop, I can pre populate my register. So I can actually say, okay, well, it was the people that attended my English classes on the 21st of December. They were all the people that came along to this workshop as well. Well, that can be the starting point, and I can edit it from there. That can be a really nice time saver as you become more familiar with the system. We're going to show you the full steps today. So I'd leave that box unticked, which means I can just add the names of the individuals that came along and show you how you can build it up to save yourself time in other ways as, as well. Here, I have a completely optional title. So what this means is I can give myself a little bit of detail what took place at this session. It's not anything for reporting purposes, but it's maybe just a nice reference point. So I could say, okay, this one, for the digital skills workshop, we maybe looked at different email providers. We looked at things like Gmail, we looked at Outlook, and we showed service users different options in relation to them. But like I say, title is completely optional, and you might want to leave that blank. Alternatively, this might be something helpful to add in later on reference point when you look back, you can just add something to the, the title later. You can edit all of this information after you've created it. So if the session actually lasted for longer or the time started a little bit later than planned, all this information can still be edited later as well. You'll see that it's pulled in the default location. So the community hall, which is where we said our digital skills workshops took place. But maybe unfortunately at the moment they're being delivered online. So I can make that change here. Crucially now, the type, it says a register. So if I'm going to record a register, what that means is I'm going to save the names of the individuals that came along. Individuals that are added to my account have participant profiles. I'm going to say that these people came along. So that's Lucy, Tim, Tony, James, etc. Alternatively, I can take a headcount. A headcount just allows me to record the number of people that came along. So there's maybe 30 people that turned up. And I can break that down in a couple of different ways. Registers are far richer for reporting purposes, and we'd always generally recommend those. It allows you to track things like the amount of unique attendees that you've worked with, a lot more information in terms of the demographics, the age range, ethnicity, etc., those people that came along. Headcounts, though, can be really useful, especially for things like big events such as fairs or fates, etc. We have lots of people that come along, not necessarily service users that are on your, on your Upshot account maybe just record that 50 people turned up for example so do probably clarify with another team member at your organization what you generally do like i say the vast majority of organizations take full registers and finally the registrar you see it's defaulted as to myself as upshot support that's who i'm logged in as today 
what this allows me to do is say who's responsible for taking this register. This can be a really helpful way of filtering down the sessions list that we'll look at in a second and find just the sessions that you're responsible for taking the register for. So I'm going to leave that as myself today. Finally, like I said, I'd always add more than one session at once to save myself time later on. So I can add multiple sessions in one of two ways. I can say add recurring sessions. Maybe this digital skills workshop is something that takes place every week for the next six weeks. Add that simply like so. Alternatively, if the sessions don't take place in those kind of nice, easy, kind of frequent, regular patterns, I can untick this and I can say copy. Here, what it does is it duplicates all the session information from above, but I can just change the date here like so. So maybe this took place a couple of days later and the next one a couple of days after that as well. So it's not kind of one of those nice, neat patterns that we saw before on the recurring sessions, but I can still add multiple sessions at once, but always recommend doing this. If I remove these now, I'm going to say add recurring sessions frequency weekly, let's say six sessions in, in total. I hit save. Here again, we can see that my sessions have been added. What I can do now is you see I've got the option here next to my activity where I can say view sessions. But as I become more familiar with the system, what you notice is now that we're on this sessions list, this is the button that's highlighted. And like I say, users spend the majority of their time around these three, three buttons. As you become more familiar, what you'll probably do is you'll come into your project and you'll go straight to the sessions list and find your session and go from there we're just showing you the different ways of doing it here. Because of the way I've come in this time round, you'll see that I've already got this activity filter selected for my digital skills workshops. But this is actually really important. If I just come straight to the sessions list, I see a long list of sessions for the different activities. And I want a quick way of finding the one I need to add a register to, the one I'm actually going to add that register to and record that on the system today. So I can use the different ways of looking at the data here. So last four weeks, next four weeks, last 12 months, all or the calendar view, if I prefer to see things visually, for example. Alternatively though, or in addition, I can also actually use the filters on the right. So we saw the activities one, but as I mentioned earlier, the session registrar one can be really helpful as well. So I can look here, find the sessions I'm responsible for, and I get that filtered down like so. Key point to note here if you're less familiar with these icons on the right, so we get this red flag on these couple of sessions for my digital skills workshops that I just set up and then we've got this green tick here on this maths class. The reason being that the system recognises today's date, recognises that we're on the 30th of December, this one took place yesterday, this one took place just over a week ago, and as yet, a register hasn't been added for these sessions. So I haven't said who's actually came along and I haven't submitted that. This means it's not counting for my reporting purposes. This red exclamation mark is kind of giving you that, that quick flag, if you like, to say, hey, if you're looking to report today, if you're looking to run, run a report, your data isn't as up to date as it could be. That's why you get this red exclamation mark. Whereas here we get this green tick to show that this has all been submitted. It's all successfully going through and I can report on, on that fully. That's what it's telling you there. If I look here, I just want to look at my digital skills workshops today. I see my four sessions, and let's add a register to that first one on the 8th of December. So I've got that add register button here. Here again, I could copy attendees from another register. I could pre-populate this to save myself time, but we're going to show the full steps today. It's become more familiar, by all means use this. But to show the full steps today, we're going to say start with an empty register and hit go. Here, what I'm doing is literally saying who came along to this session on the 8th of December. I've got this add existing attendee search bar. So this will search all the names that I've added or my team, my organisations already added to the Upshot account, all my different participants or service users. I only need to type in the first three letters. And it will start to search through for me. So I could say that James came along. I could say that Lucy came along. I could say that Alice came along. And I could say that Tony came along as well. 
And very simply, I could leave it at that. I could say that these four individuals attended and that's absolutely fine. Some organizations, absolutely fine. Just want to say that these four people came along. That's all you'd have to do in terms of taking your register. There are additional bits and pieces of information that you can add here if you wanted to. You could say here, OK, Alice maybe only attended half of the session. James wasn't actually a participant. He was the session leader. This can be really helpful for distinguishing between your session leader and participants in your report later on. A lot of organisations do like to record maybe who was the session leader or staff members on their register as well. This is a key way of distinguishing between those people. I can give individuals a rating, for example. So Lucy maybe wasn't very engaged at this session. Gave her, give her one star. Really keen to stress here again, these things are completely optional. You don't have to record all these extra bits and pieces of information. And actually some of these can be hidden if not used by your organization. So do speak to, or do get in touch with ourselves and we can, we can work on hiding those for you. I can record whether someone paid and how much they paid. Crucially, if I want to record that Tony volunteered, I tick this box here. By default, it says that he volunteered for 60 minutes. That's the length of the session. Maybe he came a little bit earlier, stayed a little bit later. That's fine. I can make that change here and specify that. I can specify in more detail what he actually did as a volunteer with these two buttons here. And then finally, I could add a note here as well. So maybe I could say that Alice left early so i'm kind of explaining why she only attended half of the session as left early because she had a dentist appointment for example so it's just adding a little bit of narrative a little bit of an explanation there the detail there close that like so so i've added a little bit of information here around this register but i can add a bit more i can add a note on the session overall so this is sometimes where organizations have found it helpful to almost put kind of like a lesson plan or a structure of the sessions, you know, what you started with and then what maybe you finished with. This can be helpful to look back at later on, see how other sessions were delivered. I can add media. So maybe there's any pictures, photos, etc. in relation to this session. I can add media um, as well. And in addition, I can add timeline events. So timeline events can be thought of as individual outputs from sessions. So it might be a case that actually people have got an accreditation, for example. You know, maybe there's some kind of qualification in relation to digital skills workshops, maybe real or maybe one just made by your organization. This can be added to people's profiles. Maybe someone's found part-time work after coming along to the digital skills workshops maybe it's helped them gain that you want to record that milestone on their profile you can do that here or maybe it's just other things that have come up in conversations you want to record accommodation status change or a note all those other bits and pieces of information that can really help to drive a case study build a case study they can be found under the timeline events so that can be added as well like i say these are all optional extra bits the core part was just adding those four names to register like I say, that was very simply done by using the add existing attendee search bar, where it looks for people already added to your account. If you maybe don't find the individual that you were looking for, maybe someone was completely new. Um, this was the first session they'd ever attended, and they maybe completed a registration form at the time. You don't have to jump out of here and go to people add new and then come back to your register later. You can just hit this box here that says create a new attendee add in the registration information, save it at the bottom, and the individual will get added to this register as well. So you don't have to go all the way out and come, come back to this. So this is great. This is just one register submitted. And like I say, I've shown a few extra bits of detail you can give here, but it's simplest. It was just adding those four names or however many names that, that would be. But how do we submit all those extra sessions? How do we add those extra registers for the six sessions that we created? So the quicker way of doing this is by going to the grid. So we can go to the grid here. Or alternatively, you'll notice we're on the grid button up here and users, they get more familiar, can come straight to this button at the top. What you'll notice here is that we're in my digital skills workshops activity. It's listed here. But on the right hand side, I can switch to another register. So if I come in for something slightly different, I find my relevant activity on the right hand side. 
What I see now is all of my sessions that are taking place for this activity, so the six that I added, and anyone that's ever attended on the left-hand side. Really easily now to take my follow-up session registers, I could just say, well, all of the same people came along on the 15th, great. All of them apart from Lucy came along on the 22nd. And I can also add additional people as well. So we might hope that, okay, it was only four individuals to begin with, but then Tom started coming along and he attended on the 22nd and the 15th, for example. And that's great. And I can add extra names like that, add existing attendee, or again, I can do the create a new attendee. So if someone completely new, not already on the system, I can add them like so I'd have to come out of here and, and go back. In addition to this, I can always go into a, a register. I can see that full information. I can record that extra information again if needed. So I can add that extra bit of detail as well here, maybe around the rating, the participant type, et cetera. Don't lose that option. But what we've done there, like I say, it's made it really nice and simple. Imagine your list isn't just five names. You know, you might have 10, 15, 20 people that attend your activities, which is great. Simple way, taking those registers, just tick and leave the box as blank. As well as this, if I do my 29th here, same process as before. But finally, if we look at this one, the 5th of January, you do also have the option here where I can say, well, OK, I expect these five people to come along again. I don't want to submit it as yet because the 5th of January you know, hasn't taken place as yet. It's a few days away, but I can kind of predict. I'm pretty sure it'll be the same people and maybe I just need to make a slight change to it later. It's fine. I can save that as a draft. You see that I get this kind of orange D that appears instead. This can be helpful again, think of those 20 or 30 names, save it as a draft register, and then maybe just untick the boxes when the date comes. Even if you do make the mistake of uh, submitting, I'm sure it's a very forgiving system. And what you can do there is just resubmit when the time comes, you know, maybe make that change. Oh, Alice didn't attend, I made a mistake there. Untick that box. And submit again and that's absolutely fine but saving draft registers can be a nice way of saving yourself time as well so this is sessions with kind of what we call full registers individuals names who's coming along etc the other option like i mentioned was headcounts so let's say for activities that are maybe ones where sort of large scale events or fairs or fates for example you maybe don't know all the names and not all people that are on your account here what you can do when you add a session, say this one took place Tuesday the 22nd, so just before Christmas, so it took place 12 and lasted for three hours. And we'll say it took place again, at maybe a primary school this time. But the type here, instead of register, we can say it was a headcount. We can see the difference now when I hit save and add register. Here, what I can do is I can only record a few slightly different things. I can say the total number of participants, let's say 30 people came along to this job fair, the male female split, and the age range of the participants. Again, it's optional whether I record these two bits, and these are kind of the upshot defaults around headcounts. You don't have to record these or have these displayed. You can as well, in addition, have custom fields here. So maybe extra bits and pieces of information that you like recorded from your headcount. Maybe some kind of ethnicity breakdown or where people came from, for example. But again, what you'll notice here, and we often recommend um, recording full registers rather than headcounts because it isn't as rich in terms of reporting purposes. It's great when you have something like a, a job fair, for example, or a big event where you don't know everyone's names. But going forward, if it was something regular, I'd always recommend taking a full register with, you know, Tony, Lucy, Jim, et cetera, on that register, because that will allow you to get the richer report in terms of amount of unique attendees, so different people you work with, the demographics of those people, rather than a head count, which will only allow you to record the total amount of attendances and see those numbers added up over time. So for rich reporting, I recommend registers, but at times head counts can be really useful. So there's two different options there. And again, I would always recommend if you're unsure which option to pick, 
speak to someone else in your organization that's maybe been been doing it before the vast majority of organizations take registers or if you want a little bit of guidance again get in touch with ourselves email or give us a ring and we can just guide you through what would be best in that specific scenario thanks paul that's great you see lots of different options there for um recording registers um also um we've now have um the upshot mobile app so you can do all of that while you're out and about um, collecting data. Can you share with us uh, how that looks, Paul? Yeah, exactly. So um, this one um, can be used for either taking those full registers or those headcounts. Very simply accessed via your browser. I'm just on the Upshot website here that describes it in a bit more detail. And there is a guide in the support section as well around how you access the app. Very simply, it's just access, like say via your browser, going to app.upshot.org.uk forward slash mobile, and you can then add that to your home screen for, for quicker use. In short though, it's really just based around individuals taking uh, their registers nice and quickly. They maybe don't need to access um, the full Upshot site, for example, and they really just need to come in here and take a register. What this means is they don't have to worry about navigating to the sessions list or grid as I've shown, very simply just pop this out maybe at the end of the session or a minute or two while you're within the session take your register all nice and done don't have to worry about logging into your laptop when you get home for example it's all about speeding up that journey so what you see when you log in is you'll see your sessions you can look at all the sessions taking place for example as well you can see them for this week or you can see them for last week etc again we see those green ticks and the red exclamation marks we talked around earlier on as well but what I can do here, for example, is let's say I've just run my yoga session. I need to add the, add the names onto the register. So it was Tom, it's Lucy, and let's say it was Alice again. And again, of course, this could be as many names as needed, but I can just take my register nice and quickly here as well. Again, if they're not already on, uh, on your system, then you can simply add and create a new attendee here as well. And what users might find helpful with this, kind of like a top tip if you like, is that if you do save a register as a draft, again, imagine it's more than five names, it's maybe 15 or 20. When you're then using the app here, you come in, all the names are already here. I maybe just remove Alice, she didn't attend, for example, and I submit like so. And again, that just saves me uh, a lot of time. And the app in general, hopefully, users find saves them a lot of time where they don't actually have to come into the full system just come in take their register it's a cool part if you like of them managing their upshot account it's all just done very simply off their phone or, or tablet device for example that's great paul thanks i know there's a lot of organizations benefiting from the uh from the mobile app um adding data as they go um and i think that's going to obviously increase as we go forward as well I think uh, there are lots of different ways to add data in, in Upshot and many shortcuts pe people develop over, over time. So it's really good for new users to get advantage of those as well. I should just stress, if you do need any support or guidance, as we've said, we are here to help. So please do contact us through the support contact details at the, top of the page um, of Upshot and do make use of those guides that are there as well. So they get clear step-by-step -step guides, which remind you of all the different functions of Upshot as well. To see all of our um, webinars in this uh, Upshot Community Webinar Series, you can go to our website, um, upshot.org.uk slash resources. And you'll find there some articles and um, top tips as well, as well as the webinars that we've been recording um, for Upshot users. So thanks once again for joining us today. Um, and thanks also for your continuing great work in supporting your participants and communities. Take care, and we hope to see you soon.